And welcome to your weekly interval. This is the Best Damn Nerd Show. I'm your host, Microphone Alchemist James Kincaid. With me tonight, Imperial Commissar Jeff Budd. So you're telling me this podcast can be heard on any PC? PC stands for personal computer. I just now in this moment got that. It's okay to laugh. <laughs> Good lad. And Professor Chris Davis. Chinatown got something for everybody. That's Chris's favorite. <laughs> that is. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a show full of quotes. Uh, welcome back to the Best Damn Nerd Show, Nerdosphere. Uh, we are going to be doing our first sort of uh, episode reprising uh, the Adult Swim discussion. The main topic tonight, the nostalgic topic tonight, will be a frisky dingo retrospective uh, that's later on in the episode. Uh, I'm very disappointed that the soundboard that I prepared for tonight, uh, full of frisky dingo quotes, is not working. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I'm not going to let you spoil this mood. Can you hear me smiling? Yeah. Anyway, but I am disappointed that the soundboard is not working. That's that's a shoot. I am very disappointed about that. But uh, we'll just have to regale the audience with our own favorite quotes and episodes and, and, and such as that. Uh, but before we get into Frisky Dingo later on, uh, we have to. It has begun. The Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter bracket round one has come and has gone well or so it would appear because a best damn nerd show first there were some ties uh in the first round and if you missed it in the discord that's bestdamnerdshow.com slash discord the ties are going to be decided by a tribunal of the us people (laughs) those on this very episode of the podcast are going to break those ties that's why I'm on the episode. Power. Uh, I, I I thought it was great timing <laughs> yeah. for you uh, to to be on this. So the, the only reason Jeff is on the show tonight. Yeah. <laughs> when you guys are just talking about shit, I don't care. Jeff is the voice of the voiceless, so we 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 need him to be on this one to help make sure that uh, this bracket goes the way that it's supposed to go. I also uh, enjoy silencing people. <laughs> <laughs> that too, and disappointing them. Um, but I, first of all, I have to say, one, once again, I love all the activity w- within the brackets on the Discord, uh, just the engagement. I think uh, the Illuminati did a great job in terms of just how the first round sort of shook itself out. And I can, again, cannot stress enough the randomness that there were no preconceived matchups, which they've been accused of before. There was no Jason versus Mrs. Voorhees sort of contrived uh, shenanigans here. This all just shook out. Uh, in a haphazard way, and I and I think they did it pretty well. What you, what do you have to say, Davis? If we wanted to submit like a a possible like that might have happened, where do we do that? Uh, because uh, I Illuminati I don't believe that Best for Amherst a Show. moment. <laughs> There's the Illuminati a, channel. I mean, the fact that we had the mask, the mask face off, and then just, happened, just bro. Yeah, you know, there and you know, Goro Zangief also just happened. And that's, yeah. that's the beauty of this tournament. The best damn nerd show historic biggest tournament. Let's let's get in to see how, how round one <laughs> uh shook out though. Uh Liu Kang, the one seed from the hero side on Mortal Kombat's end, taking on the eight seed from Street Fighter E Honda. Uh no real drama there as as Liu Kang sort of easily made his way past him. Yeah, I mean I think I think to no surprise there. There was no real sort of uh, thought that, that E Honda would stand up to Liu Kang. So I, th- He's I a feel Yokozuna. like, yeah, I mean, and, and he, he did, he did better than well, it, how Quan Chi was doing originally. Quan Chi ended up uh, <laughs> making quite the run uh, it, it later on in, in the voting uh, sub zero, the two seed for mortal Kombat, taking on Blanca, the seven seed uh, got even more votes than Liu Kang and easily dispatched Blanca. I think sub zero probably, the love even more Su- <laughs> love Sub Zero hate Blanca. This was perfect. <laughs> you hate no. Blanca. Yeah, oh, man. I mentioned as much. Mm, maybe you should listen to the podcast. I try. <laughs> <on> our- <laughs> I know it's. I block it out every time. <laughs> uh, the it's three the seed- they're unlikable. <laughs> Some uh, <laughs> the three seed Scorpion uh, taking on six seed Dalsum. There will be no Dalsum celebration in this one as Scorpion. With relative ease, moved moved by uh, Dalsim there, no no real surprises th- thus far. I, I, I would say That's no, good, no flame. Mortal Kombat clean sweeping it so far. <laughs> yeah, Mortal Kombat dominating, and that continues here. Now I will say, in, top seats, though. 
we we set a deadline for voting for a reason. It was Uh-oh. 7 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday. The first scandal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a scandal. Alarm, illuminati. <laughs> this is not a scandal. This is just the facts. This is what happened. We set the deadline. I I put in private chat what the vote totals were after You do um, have like a time stamped screenshot. Immediately after the polls closed. This is this is where they stood. And uh the 4 seed Johnny Cage taking on the 5 seed Cammy. No, it is not a tie as it may be suggested in Discord right now by the skin by the by the sliver of the lenses of his sunglasses Johnny Cage uh gets by Cammy by a single vote. Uh so that is not a tie. So we will not nice be try, breaking our Rick first time. He, he, I happen. mean the trying to create chaos. Close. Yeah, well <laughs> Uh, they, I do appreciate how close some of the matchups got. I love that we have ties to break. I think I think this is exciting. Uh, an equally close matchup. This time, the four seed for Street Fighter's heroes edging out Raiden by a single vote. Guile is moving on. USA, baby. Mm. You're going. We're going all chalk right now. All top seeds are taking taking it down. The four fives, though, as you would imagine, I mean, each one being decided by a single vote. I, I'm very, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, then we had the three seed for Street Fighter Chun Li taking on Kitana, who uh, has a soft spot in my heart. I actually was one of the very few that voted for Kitana, but Chun Li easily, easily dispatched Kitana. Uh, Maybe she, she does belong in Mortal Kombat. She's going home. She might. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> she's proving herself. Chun Li moving on. Uh, the two seed for Street Fighter, Ken Masters, by a single vote. This was the nearest one. This one was tied for a long time, or if not, had Sonya Blade lead. Ken, and Ken was losing for a couple of days at least. Yeah. yeah, down by, I think, as many as two votes at one point, uh, but a late surge by a single vote. Ken Masters defeats Sonya Blade. Mark Shurex in protest, not happy, not on the podcast this evening. <laughs> 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 Actually, Mark likes Ken, too. <laughs> so I, I think Mark wanted Ken to be the one seed. We got, so, got no, fe- no no female characters moving on so far. That's so. not true. Chun Li, the world's oh, strongest right, woman. Right. <laughs> <You> idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, and then the one seed wrapping up the hero battle. The Cinderella story uh, is not to be had. Ryu easily defeating Striker. Sending uh, that is the Cinderella story. The fact that Ryu beat Striker. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there there was a part Vegas of me. Had even money at one point. There was a part of me that thought that the trolls in the Discord could could sway it and, and send Ryu home. I would have been very bummed out by that. But it's hey, Striker made it to the tournament. To have the two most powerful guys in the tournament face off in the first round. Sometimes <laughs> it happens because the seating is weird. I mean, it can't be helped. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, you have touched matchups early on in your season. You know, mm-hmm. you get your strength. The schedule goes up, but you still have losses. So you got to you got to play the harder team. So exactly. Yeah. Striker had to come in as a wild card. And that's only because of injuries, you know? Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> Davis, do you want to do who what the matchups will be for the heroes next round now? Or do you want to just do both at the end? Here? No, we, we can do the for the heroes now. Okay. So we we have uh, Liu Kang, the one seed against uh, Johnny Cage, the four seed. And then... Uh, Pretty big matchup here between Sub Zero and Scorpion. Ooh. Uh, two and three. Who a uh, lot of lot of uh, fable around that one. A lot of stories. Absolutely. So, Both those matchups really. Oh. But yeah. why? But why are we? Uh, wouldn't they be facing off with the the Street Fighter seeding? No. Is, no, because that's no. what we were doing in the first round. It was Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat. What I know, but well, you have <laughs> you have you have you have it separated to where the top seeds of Street Fighter are playing okay. the lower seeds of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and then the top seeds of Mortal Kombat are playing the lower lower seeds of Street Fighter. So what you want, what you think is going to happen here is you're going to probably get the best Mortal Kombat character versus the best Street Fighter character, typically. Okay, but it doesn't it doesn't always shake out that way. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the Illuminati gave you special powers to, to, to do <laughs> and this, this instantly bracket. regretting them. So no, so no, I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just clarifying. I'm, I'm as in the dark. The, the Illuminati work in mysterious ways. So I, I am just, uh, just clarifying. You know, I beseech you, O Illuminati, for, for guidance. Uh, okay, so we, what? It's, it's Liu Kang versus whom? Again, uh, Johnny, it again. Johnny, Johnny Cage. Cage. Okay, and then the brothers. 
or not brothers, but uh, oh, ninja palette the, swaps, Sub Zero yeah, Scorpion, know, clan rival. rival, rivals, yeah. if you will, Sub Zero. Oh no, the Lin Kuei got him. <laughs> so yeah, those are pretty big matchups, and I, I think That's we're what gonna the people want to see. And we're definitely gonna see the same thing on the bottom of this of this side too. Uh, we got Ryu and Guile. Guile yep. number four, Ryu go number one. Yeah, Guile. Ryu. Yep, Ryu and Guile. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ken Masters barely getting by the first round. He's gonna have to get past Chun Li. I don't, I I think that's gonna be, that's, that's gonna be a, a closely contested matchup. I feel. I'm predicting yeah, I, Liu Kang Sub Zero Ryu Chun Li. I, I I I believe that is the accurate uh, path as well. I think that's yeah. I think that's who's coming out. I think there's gonna be some close ones. But I, I, think, I, think Sub-Zero Sub-Zero has close, I think Scorp subs will be close. I think Chun Li and Ken will be really close. I don't think so. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think I think Johnny. I, oh, actually, you said Liu Kang. I think Johnny Cage is actually coming out. Of, Johnny Cage, of, who barely beat. Yeah. Uh, Cammy. Yeah, but Liu Kang was facing E Honda. I mean, uh, everybody. Everybody. Cammy's seen that, that much better. Besides, everybody's what, seen the great Cammy costumes. So you know that's what they were probably voting for. E Honda shows more skin. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see it. Yeah. <laughs> The excess skin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, uh, all right, I'm 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 into that. That's good. That's going to be some some good matchups in the uh, in in the next round. I I am most bummed probably about Dulcine though. Uh, just I'm most bummed we're about not... Raven. Oh, and I mean I like yeah. Dial, but yeah, was, yeah, that was another closely contested matchup. It's a thunder god. Oh, yeah, Gu- Guile's got the sonic boom though. Threw it right back at him. Literally oh, a god. Pow- yeah, uh, Guile's <laughs> powered by the USFA, pal. So, what are you gonna do about that? Have you lost your balls? <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme versus Christopher Lambert. I mean, if we're gonna, that's yeah, how that, I mean, been built. That, that's also a tough, tough matchup as well. I, although I guess I, I gotta I would, go Van Damme. See, I'd go Lambert. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, can't go against the Highlander. Uh, but in this yeah, case, Guile's moving win. on. What? Yeah, you can, and you can win. <laughs> nah, <did>. nah. <laughs> not, not, not how it was built. All right, let's take it to the villain side. the Highlander that made it all the way to the end. <laughs> how many Highlanders are we talking about here? Three that I know of. Okay. All right, let's get to the villain side of the bracket. Uh, the one seed for Mortal Kombat, Shao Kahn, uh, easily moving by the eight seed for Street Fighter Jury. Uh, Shang Tsung uh, getting by Balrog with similar ease. And now we get to our first tie. The, the three seed from Mortal Kombat Goro versus the six seed from Street Fighter Zangief. From All... the USSR. <laughs> yes, for the USSR. I love that this matchup came to be. A Goro Zangief matchup. I mean, two just apps, a big hoss battle. Uh, so, so much going into this one. So much strength and power. All knotted up, and we have to break the tie. Uh, Jeff. We will start with you. Who do you cast your vote for uh, to move on? The Dragon Prince Goro. Goro, so has, champion has, of Mortal Kombat, has a lead. Davis, who Killer are of you? Great Kung Lao. Who are you? <laughs> it's true. I mean, the champion of Mother Russia. Uh, <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> In my mind, he is all that is Russia. And all that the Americans are scared of. I'm going with Zangief. We're going to wow. back back the hairy man. <laughs> oh, shit. I really didn't want it to come down to James. So I know how much you love <laughs> You know how much I love professional wrestling. And it's a love-hate thing with you and the Soviets. Uh, I know. I But I absolutely deplore communism in the soviet union uh, and you know they were the great enemy in the cold war prince goro wasn't the great enemy in the cold war and i think prince goro would probably be pretty into wrestling and an even better wrestler than zangief so i am going with goro to move on prince Poor goro shit. the correct winner Zang- <laughs> i'm going i going against the wrestler just because you know i mean the red scare it really affected me so can't uh, <laughs> can't you really live during go. those times? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know, I was enjoying my shadow radio serials, but living in constant fear <laughs> of, of the Soviet <laughs> communists. So, uh, all right, and we 
We go right from one tie into another one. Uh, he was the butt of the joke early going in the bracket here. Quan Chi, he had one vote, and that one vote was just the one that I put in so that people could just click <laughs> to vote <laughs> for the longest time, uh, taking on Seth, uh, the five seed from Street Fighter Villainry. But now it is all knotted up, and we have to break the tie. Davis, are you going with Quan Chi, or are you going with Seth? You know, there there was a lot of talk in the Discord about how stupid a name Seth is and how <laughs> somebody with that name just shouldn't win. And I agree. Quan Chi is much cooler. Yeah, uh, I, in the uh, the videos of the video games that Jeff led me to after our last Street Fighter Mortal Kombat talk. Oh, yeah. I really liked uh, Quan Chi's character in the, in Mortal the videos. Mortal Kombat 9, yeah. Yeah, he was... He had a really cool aura about him, and uh, I just there wasn't a whole lot of backstory to him, but I just liked how he was used, and uh, I think he's much cooler than Seth. So I, I, I'm going Quan Chi here. Jeffrey, I voted for Seth, <laughs> and I've hated Quan Chi for years, but <laughs> I also hate Seth. <laughs> and then watching those videos of Quan Chi, it reminded me of a, a different time when I was younger and didn't hate him yet. And I think I've watched too many fourth snake videos on YouTube and it's poisoned my mind against Quan Chi. <laughs> I'm reversing my vote. I'm voting oh! Quan Chi to win. So say we all. I had Never a feeling. A tie. Yeah. I had a feeling you might change your vote, and I am in solidarity. Was, because, like, I voted for Seth because first off, he was against Quan Chi, and I thought it would have been funny for Quan Chi to be eliminated right away. Sure. But like, Street Fighter Four, Seth sucked. You know, like he's, <laughs> he was a stupid, like, main bad guy. I was like, who is this character? He's terrible. I mean, he was hard to play against, but I mean, other than the design, Never liked him. the little yin yang ball, like. <laughs> rotating in his stomach i was like nah this is stupid so yeah let's go with quan chi mortal Kombat. yeah i i i agree i had a feeling that you might change your vote uh but i was going quan chi all the way you know what i think well. it was partly mortal Kombat mythologies and thinking exactly. about how quan chi was in it and i got excited i like and that I, game <laughs> and i did like the shady stuff that was going on with shinnok behind the scenes when shao Kahn was doing all of his things and quan chi was his main lieutenant and I don't know. I do. I mean, and he is responsible for the Scorpion Sub Zero rivalry, which is one of the most you know popular stories in Mortal Kombat. So you got to give credit where credit's due. What is Seth responsible for? Nothing. Not much. Yeah. Not not I think not much at all. Irritating Chris Saglia. I think that's all Seth has ever been <laughs> and, responsible for. <laughs> and I think we got we got the best of both worlds. We got to make fun of Quan Chi a little bit when he was getting trounced badly. Uh, he's eventually going to die. Does he get to go against Shang Tsung? I'd like we'll, to see Shang Tsung. We'll we'll, we'll find I mean, out I'll shortly. Let, yeah. Quan Chi, moving on. Those were those were our, I believe, the only ties that we that we had to deal with here. They were. Uh, all right, and then the four seed for Street Fighter Vega, the pretty Spaniard, moving on against the uh, well, not pretty, so pretty. Yeah, <laughs> not her face. Uh, five the seed Denny Melina. Clone. Yeah, uh, paper bagger. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then the three seed for Street Fighter Sagat. Man, this was. So was, uh, I like this Sagat, a little heartbreaking, yeah. but I went I went with Kano just because. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean Sagat's great, but I I went with Kano almost exclusively for how great he was in the first Mortal Kombat movie. Um, <laughs> but it had a similar fate for him here out in the first round. <laughs> Sagat <laughs> easily easily moving on. Uh, all right, and then the two seed for Street Fighter villains Akuma, uh, defeating Reptile. I went with Reptile here. I, I, I like Reptile, but I voted I was Akuma. You gotta have Akuma win at least. Yeah, first. yeah. I mean, I love Reptile, but Reptile is just uh, a. Fun I get it. Yeah, yeah, definitely thought Reptile would have a little bit more back. I thought this was gonna be a little bit closer, uh, just because he's, he's so popular. Fan. Yeah, he's yeah. very popular. But no, I, 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 the fans did pretty good here because Akuma is that powerful. Yeah, and finally. To. Where credit, giving credit where credit is due to Professor Davis, and I am happy that he was right in the in the upset, an eight versus one upset. It. New Cybot, the real Sub Zero, takes down the one seed for Street Fighter M Bison. Cinderella story live in the Street Fighter bracket here, the Mortal Kombat for Street Fighter bracket, and eight takes down a one. And oh, Bison man. eliminated in the first round. You'll love to see it, man. <laughs> You'll love to see it. 
I was stoked when I saw the results there. I was like, I, I was so I, proud of else. our listeners. I, I actually didn't know that until I just looked at it. I just figured Noob would lose. <laughs> no way. I, real think he was, I think he was in the lead like the entire time. He was doing oh. well. The real Sub-Zero uh, pulls it off and eliminates M. Bison. When, when you call an upset like that, though, I mean, I got I got work ahead of me for Take years Take this guy to, to lost I can, wages. I can That's live off I this for a while. <laughs> Who's for Denny's? <laughs> I'm so happy that you called it right, Davis. You're hot, man. We got to get you to the tables. Get it gotta going. Get you to those tables. Seven. All right. So once again, the Illuminati has given you special powers to to do right, right. this bracket here. Oh boy. Well, you know, like this gonna... one's a little harder because mo most of the Mortal Kombat villains moved on. <laughs> no, it, it actually wasn't uh, too bad here. But you're you got uh, let's see, Shao Kahn versus Quan Chi. The one Ooh. versus the four, and then you're gonna get another mix up mix here. Oh no 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 no! I'm sorry, Goro won there because you you chose that. So you got Shang Sun against Goro. Ooh, Ooh. the buddies going together. I like that. Buddies. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty pretty brutal. Um, okay, and then we got let's see the two versus three Akuma versus Sagat. That's good. That's a good one. Ooh, that's good. That, that's going to be a tough one. Uh, yeah. And then you got the Cinderella story. Noob Sabat against Vega. Pretty boy. Ooh, Vega. Re okay, so Noob, even though he's an eight seed, he's he's taking on a four. Okay. Yep. yep. So that's, that's how not it too bad. Work. That's that's not too bad a, ro a road for him. I was worried he's no. going to have to face Shao Kahn. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> so, yeah, no, he's looking like he could, he could make some more damage here. He could. The noise Easily. can still go. I could see it happening. Vega oh, is a favorite, though. I do like Vega a lot. I like Vega a lot, but Noob Saibot is the original Sub Zero. Imagine I mean, if we got about it. the real Sub Zero versus Bihan Sub Zero in the final for the fate of Earthrealm. That might be the only <laughs> scenario in which I vote against Earthrealm. Hey, James, you said the real Sub Zero versus Bihan. Oh, did I get that wrong? <laughs> That's the first time that you haven't referred to Bihan as the real Sub Zero. Did I get that incorrect? Yeah, you said it oh, incorrectly. B, okay, what, what, what's the other one? What's the... What's the... Well, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't say it. Excuse me, Bihan is the real Sub-Zero. Noob Cybot versus uh, Scarface, who didn't even think it was important to wear a mask in one of the games. Hated they're that. Both, they're both real Sub-Zero. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I do worry about it. I spent way more of my life than I should have worrying about it. I hate that they did this. Anyway. Yeah, but then we got Noob Saibot. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather we didn't, and we just had the one Sub-Zero. Well, blame Quan Chi. And it, like, it, my life yeah. would be... It's its weird that You're I can say this, but, but I firmly believe that my life would be more harmonious if we only had the one Sub-Zero. Then we'd all be just pulling for Sub-Zero throughout this whole tournament. Like, I can I pull for a Sub-Zero on both sides. I got two chances of winning with Sub-Zero. Yeah, here. but one's called Noob Cybot, though. That's know? a cool name. What's wrong with that? It's not as cool. All right, we're going to take a break. <laughs> 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 on the other side, we will be getting into uh, what I can only expect will be the 2021 Game of the Year. The, no the latest... Emily is away sequel has arrived and we're going to be taking a look at the gameplay trailer and talking about what we might expect. Uh, try and uh, plan out some time to stream this bad boy on the other side in the best damn oh, nerd show. Welcome back to the best damn nerd show. James Kincaid, Jeff Budd, Chris Davis here with you. Uh, and we are fresh off that scintillating first round of the Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter bracket battle. Can't wait for round two. Uh, but now uh, we got to get into Emily is away three. Or Emily is away, like less than sign and and the three number that makes a little heart. But it's Emily is away three. It's the third installment to my favorite uh, reality based video game franchise that has ever been. Uh, <laughs> and for those of you that don't know what uh, the first two were about, Emily is away is a it will start as an AOL instant message simulator, uh, harkening back to the times when you know. <laughs> 
us in how our could, 30s would, would how go could you on say no <laughs> <laughs> i honestly again again traveling all the way back when i first played the original emily is away i thought it was one of those prank things uh where my reactions were being recorded and it was going to get sort of like shot out over the internet somehow like whoever had told me about this game we're going to see like whatever reaction they were going for in this game it was a very stressful experience, uh, but a great experience where the player is on AOL trying to uh, win the heart of the love of his life, Emily, the one that got away. And I think, Jeff, you so eloquently put, you know, everybody's gotten Emily uh, in, in their life, at least from our generation uh, and, you know, interacting on AOL and stuff, which uh, ironically enough, forever shut down on my birthday a couple of years ago, uh, like which is just sort of a jagged little pill. Um, to 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 do that but the second one followed a similar formula we were still on aol but it incorporated uh you know you were able to click on youtube links and listen to old nostalgic music that the people you were talking to were recommending and things like that so uh we're getting a third one and this one is taking us to the world of social media more in depth to social media uh and so here's a little gameplay trailer that i, I want to roll in here uh, and have have you guys react to it, and then we can we can talk about what maybe we expect and what we think later. Here we go. A lot of problems I see. Four C coming. So we're a year behind already. Oh, we're we're on Facebook now. Okay. A face Nook, actually. <laughs> of oh. course. <laughs> oh. Oh wow. Okay. Yo. See, I like it. It's taking us back. It's showing us what yeah. we've become. Uh -huh. Now, back when social media was good. This is before all of the political posts. Well, yeah, it showed some at the start. Well, yeah, because it was just kids. <laughs> yeah. I liked it when Messenger was like that, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brad thinks that Facebook is fake as fuck. <laughs> the, the look of this is nice. Poker face video. Oh, the YouTube thing again. Yep. I never played the second one, so... Chocolate, Chocolate Rain. Rain. <laughs> did you ever did you ever watch me play the second one, Jeff? No. Oh. Okay. I wonder if that's how the photos are actually gonna look. Probably. Yeah, that's what I think probably. Maybe they'll be it looks a little risque in the shadows oh. there. Oh, combat compatibility farm quiz. Bill. <laughs> little, little farm bill. Oh, Emily is away. Oh boy. Oh, Facebook. Wait, April sixteenth. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he yeah of this recording, uh, he was a year off, but it is. Uh, we are recording this on April sixteenth, twenty twenty one. So the game did just launch. Uh, I'm gonna have to carve out some time uh, to stream that bad boy. Uh, at some point soon, I want everybody to get my my honest and live reactions <laughs> when I, when I play through it. Um, I, I really enjoyed streaming the first one some time ago. But what what you guys think of the, <laughs> the the next Emily is Away trailer, Davis? That was fun. That was fun to watch. I I, I like the the look of it. I and I like that they've kind of evolved the game into you know that next social media thing that was kind of going on next, which was the start of Facebook. They skipped MySpace, which. There, there is a lot of ammo there with the top eight, but you can you can go ahead and skip that. That's fine. I <laughs> uh, see. But, I actually wish that it had gone back to MySpace. That was my main sort could. of takeaway. Is that I I, I would have preferred to go to that time. They actually could if they want to. I wonder if they will. They could kind of combine the two at the start of both of them, and you could sure. like kind of have that effect in there. Uh, that would be that'd be funny as hell because there was so many good stories. Uh, <laughs> around top eights so uh but yeah no that that's gonna be fun i i definitely think we should make this uh event in the discord and have some fun with it with the community and uh plan plan watching you play and, <laughs> and probably reverting back to a much younger you that will not take much for you to do <laughs> no and I'll, I'll make sure to have a, li a little a little bit of uh of light alcohol on on hand too for oh. for any rough spots that it takes me to well, uh we all... but yeah that's slash discord so look out for for details of that jeff what did you think of uh where emily is away is taking us next never I'm said more... it'd be places we wanted to go 
that's a that's a topical 08 reference at that point. <laughs> Damn it, you're right. I'm worried that it's become too complex and that you're going to get lost in it. And <laughs> you're just going to I mean because the the original game you got lost in it and played it a bunch of times depending yeah. on on how much you can play with this Facebook app type thing. It's like, uh-oh. We're just going to lose mean, you. I mean, sometimes when I, when I come home after a long day of work or whatever, I'll just throw it on and just, you know, just play it. Just quick little playthrough of Emily is away. I little, believe you. Little, little bottle of red and then bed, you know? Well, <laughs> that's just depressing, <laughs> though. Like, why do you do that after a long day? It's like, uh, just, I want to games to play myself more. It's a very roman- romantic setting. Yeah. Helps me feel, <laughs> you know? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm excited to, to, to play through it. Uh, I, I do think that they miss an opportunity with not going back to to MySpace with the top eight with personalized profiles where a certain song plays. Like I love the like YouTube links and stuff like that, but you could it would be cool to see them recreate uh, the the sort of individualized profile. Like have one where it's just like a glitter explosion whenever you, <laughs> you go to their page or or, or what have you. All, all that stuff to me, MySpace was the peak of social media. And it's it's been downhill ever ever since then. MySpace was my favorite, so I, I would have liked them to uh, take us back there. Davis, you you, you don't I, agree? <laughs> MySpace caused a lot of problems, man. It was it was brutal. That that caused so many fights I did not need. I I had a friend that would that created eight fake profiles just so he could put those eight fake profiles on his top eight, so he didn't have to deal with anything. <laughs> that's uh it's a little bit convoluted <laughs> doesn't that like, piss everybody off though because none of them are in his top eight yeah so that was like well if, if nobody's on it then nobody can say anything well, except for tom, just maybe tom was on eight, it though? I you had you had to, there was a you had to hide it uh via like html coding which was very easy you just went yeah, to like that was later it. on yeah. though it seemed like that was a little bit later. There was, de- there was definitely top eight drama to be had before that. And if you were a complete psycho uh, like me, you could still <laughs> find it even when they hit it. You hit the yeah. resource button and you just scroll down and you look for the people's names like, oh, <laughs> I've dropped two slots since she hid her <laughs> top eight. See how it is. And yeah. uh, the, the other part of MySpace was that it, it took sick, a James. lot. I am. It took a lot of memory to run some of those pages later on. Like when people would add so much, it would kill your PC back then. It would, oh, yeah. it would yeah, slow it down point. so bad. It was, it was yeah, I had too many videos. It could, uh-huh. it, it'd be fine now, but like back then when, uh, you know, hardware was different. It was, it, it, I got to call it up. out somebody from, from the discord and from my life, from the cool's house heroes. Uh, Tim had a MySpace page that was so overburdened with shit that every time like we were at the computers at the junior college at the time way better than my own personal computer and it would crash it every single time there's there's no way to get to his damn profile it was ridiculous it was like well there's the end of my spacing for for this period of time because you just crashed the entire computer i don't know even know what he did he but you know tim tim is a uh, computer programmer and had i i think wanted to optimize his myspace experience while minimizing everybody else's i suppose it was brutal just absolutely uh, brutal. So I, I just shout that out. I, I do think that the world is ready for MySpace to come back and come back in a big way. Uh, that is that is my current plan uh, is trying to get involved with some type of company that can make that happen and that I can just be the new MySpace Tom. I just want to be everybody's friend, you know, and just be in front of a whiteboard or whatever. And that's just that's just how it is. I, th- I think the nostalgia aesthetic is is still prevalent enough. And I think MySpace is now old enough to where that's going to speak to a lot of people. That's that bring back the bulletin boards too. That was another thing that like they had a little bit on Facebook and you saw a little bit in that Emily is away trailer, but I just think MySpace is more fun. Isn't MySpace still around? Like doesn't, yeah, it never went away. They're like not doing anything. It's not what it was though. It's completely different. What is it now? Is it just music? I don't even uh, think it's music anymore. Yeah, I don't think they do that anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I think it just exists. Yeah, just okay. it's just it's just kind of like just this floating out there. Yeah. It's a space. It's that warehouse in Indiana Jones. It's just it's just there. <laughs> but 
the treasures are our, our old posts and everything uh, that are on there. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for the for this next Emily is away. I will I will be sure to carve out some time to stream it. Go ahead, Jeff. I was gonna say, are you that excited? The bulk of this video ended up us being talking about MySpace. Well, <laughs> sorry, you know, like, you, you which isn't about... even in the game. <laughs> no, but <laughs> you're talking uh... about how the game could have been better that you haven't played yet. <laughs> that's fair. That that that's a fair criticism. I hope Emily rejects you again. <laughs> and, and so do I, because if I have a critique about the second one, it was too easy to quote beat it. The fake ending where Emily comes away with you. I don't that's like not it. canon. Yeah. No, do absolutely we... not. Will this be the same Emily? So is this like post college? I, I feel like, like the Emily in part two was now? a different Emily. No, I it's feel not like the same Emily in the second one. Uh, I don't believe so. It's very What's similar. Okay. I thought it progresses. I thought we're following no. them through their lives. No, 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 no. It's just sort of a different. Like it sort of gives it a facelift and a little bit more in depth in the second one. And there's multiple people that you're sort of can talk to. Uh, as opposed to just Emily. And then this one looks like to take place exclusively on Facebook with probably even more people to talk to. And I am excited mm. for that messenger feature. And the, I'm sure once I see the old Facebook layout, or excuse me, Facebook, but Facebook in the uh, Emily is Away fr fr franchise canon, I'm sure that'll br bring back some some good memories too. Because there are some some good Facebook stories. You talk about creating fake accounts. Remember that Heroes game, Jeff? <laughs> that Heroes <laughs> game was great. I made, I made a Facebook account, so I had a healer. So I could log, log on and heal my superhero and keep going. But, you know, um, that was a great game. All right, we're going to take one more break. Finally, on the other side, we're going to be talking about what we're here for tonight, the main topic, our nostalgia. Well, a little bit of MySpace as well. Uh, but we're going to be talking Frisky Dingo. Boosh, boosh, boosh on the other <laughs> side of the Best Damn Nerd Show. Welcome back to the Best Damn Nerd Show. James Kincaid, Jeff Budd, Chris Davis, uh, and we are main event segment here tonight. We are going to be doing a frisky dingo retrospective. Uh, the adult swim underrated gem uh, only got two seasons, but is one of my all time favorite TV shows and just holds up to this day. I've, I've rewatched it. Thanks to it being now on HBO max. So if you've not seen frisky dingo, uh, and you would like to have it not sort of as spoiled for you as we're going to be doing a deep dive onto the series. You can go ahead and pause this now on your iPods or your Zunes or your other non-name brand MP3 <laughs> playing devices, as it were. The Zune comes first. I always screwed that up. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be doing a deep dive onto uh, into Frisky Dingo. Talked about it a little bit on the Adult Swim episode uh, and Jeff, I know you suggested that we that we do a whole episode on this, or at least you know a big main segment on it. So I demanded it. Yes. So here, so here we are. Why Frisky Dingo, Jeff? What I mean, what what is it about it to you that that sort of that you demand this? Well, actually, it was the two of you that both put it on your Fantastic Four list of Adult Swim shows. And you did not. I did not. No. <laughs> Maybe that's why I demanded this out of guilt. Becoming kind of a liability. Are you never going to get the hermit crab at this rate? Well, I think I mean, <laughs> Frisky Dingo for having only two seasons and what each episode is what 11 minutes or, yeah, or 15 minutes. minutes. Or, yeah. yeah. We only have 11 minutes for this part of the kidnapping. <laughs> um, you know, for, for having only two seasons of 11 minute episodes, uh, an incredible supply of quotes, uh, an incredible supply of very memorable, fun characters, uh, and just uh, j just a great show that sort of took a very, very different look at the sort of superhero genre uh, before that was really all, all the rage. Uh, Jeff, I'll ask you again, how did you uh, come upon Frisky Dingo? I know we talked about the Adult Swim episode, but I continue to forget. Yeah, I mean, it was it was just random. It was just watching Adult Swim on a Sunday night and you saw the commercials for it, which gave nothing away because they were also nonsensical. Uh, if you had never seen the series before, because the, the show is crazy. And yeah. it does, if, if you're catching it in the middle of something, it's going to take a while to like understand what the hell is going on. <laughs> um, but then, like, as soon as I started watching it, I fell in love almost immediately. The, the first episode I saw had nothing to do with, you know, like the beginning of the story introduced me to nobody really. I mean, the, it was just them in the sewer wandering around the entire time. So. I was completely lost. The second episode I saw was the second episode. So at least I got the entire introduction of 
Awesome X and all of the characters from basically his side of the story. So that was like a, a better introduction to what the series is about. And yeah, I mean, I enjoyed both episodes immensely and just couldn't wait to watch more. And then the more you watch, the greater it was. And adultswim.com at the time had all those different little, you know, couple minute clips. And I mean, you go through all of those, it's just <laughs> nonstop jokes. And, you know, Davis is the one who talks about that there are so many callbacks. I was learning about jokes long after that they were first introduced and then going back and seeing the introduction of stuff. I mean, it's it's an amazing series and it's worth like a few rewatches so that you get it all because it is compact with jokes and laughs and just random like uh, just Easter eggs and references. Yeah, and it is. Uh, I mean, <laughs> as I was going back to rewatching it, it's shaped more of sort of the things that we've said throughout the course of the best damn nerd show than, <laughs> than even I remember. There, there are things like I a completely and has Easter eggs. For seriously, <laughs> like yeah. even off the top here, I'd forgotten about Phil was the one with the Zoom and the fact that he left yeah. his Zoom <laughs> is what led to me on movie nights being, you know, turn ah. off your Zooms or other non-name brand MP3 play devices because <laughs> of Phil's freaking Zoom. Uh, I had com- I had completely forgotten about that until until I rewatched it. But there there are so many uh, <laughs> so many little things. We get so many so many great characters and uh, you know just D- Davis. How about you? How, how did you first get into? It? Was it a Jeff Bud experience for you as well? Yeah, I mean it was very similar. It was, but you know I was in a college house with a bunch of uh, stoners and they love their Adult Swim. As did I. I didn't need that. I had my drink. But, uh, you know, it was just something that came on and you just you just kind of just got entranced right away because it's not something that you have to sit through. And that goes for a lot of adult swim shows. You just kind of can pick it up and just laugh, have a good time. Uh, at least the good ones. Uh, you don't have to wait, you know, four or five episodes to see, you know, is this going to be good or not? It's going to it's funny from the start. It's, yeah. it's good. It's quick. It's witty. Uh, the writing is good. Uh, the characters are weird. <laughs> it, it gets very strange. And uh, regardless of that, it's it's still fun and just like it. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Obviously, De- definitely not. And it, it's <laughs> it's important to note that it's from the same production uh, company, seventy thirty Productions, that did C Lab twenty twenty one. Uh, and you hear, you know, a lot of those same voices pop up on, on this show uh, and, and everything like that. And the name Frisky Dingo originally was going to be Whiskey Tango, but there was some type of copyright infringement. So they jokingly said, well, we'll just call it Frisky Dingo. And the name stuck. So that's <laughs> that's that's the explanation for why uh, it is Frisky Dingo. And they even they even referenced that uh, in in the show. Um but I just, <laughs> I, I I love all the quotes. I, I I love so many of of the characters and everything like that. What about f- favorite sort of episodes or you know maybe a couple episodes that you guys have? For me, like I I think I in rewatching it, I found what probably my definitive favorite episode is, and it's the episode where they're the in, in the emergency room. Uh, it's it's after Grace Ryan has fallen into the uh, truck of with the drums of radioactive ants. Uh, Killface has the pipe in his lung. Uh, Watley's claws are sticking out of uh, Phil, uh, and Simon has a nasty scrape. <laughs> and that 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 episode to me might be my my absolute favorite, just because everything that goes down in it, the jokes are so good. The fact that it's like the origin of the Killface did not have insurance sort of uh, trope throughout because his uh, what is it, workers' comp, and his just health he, insurance he has lapsed. Yeah, yep. so <laughs> the, my favorite part of the whole episode, and I wish the soundboard was working, but he's got a gigantic like pipe sticking out of his lungs, and uh, he has to walk down the hallway to use the payphone, and you just hear this clattering off screen. He's <laughs> a woman, I have a pipe in my lung. <laughs> Fatty, <laughs> I hope your baby's born dead, which is incredibly dark and horrible, but hearing face deliver it is just, it's still hilarious. And then him with this giant pipe jutting out of his lung being uh, put on hold uh, at a call center trying to to work it out while he's uh, shrieked at uh, by, by the person at the call center. It's just... I, I don't know. That's that's my my favorite episode, I think. And it, Killface is my favorite character. Uh, so th- that that to me is probably his like just funniest episode. So that that's the one that I like. Davis, how about you? Do you have any favorite moments or a couple episodes? 
Oh, uh, gosh. I mean, <laughs> you, the, you get them in the sewer together. You get Killface and Xander walking around. Xander's got his... It's called what it is. It's a rape wig. Uh, <laughs> he's got his rape wig on with yeah, you know, just, <laughs> There's a lot of markings on his body, like you know, boy toy and all this stuff. Well, but let's, it, let's set the background for why he was in that, <laughs> in that situation. Because well, one of the best side characters on the show, Ronnie, <laughs> like, an extracle. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 gonna be. Don't good for you worry about that, guys. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. Uh, so he was left with one of his exical, you know, minions, I guess. One of his and, former henchmen, yeah. Yeah, not knowing that he is actually Awesome X and he is currently a prisoner. And uh, Ronnie has his way with them. But before <laughs> doing that, he puts a rape wig on him and glues it to his head. So he looks like a woman. <laughs> and then he makes love to his face. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then they're they're just uh, he finds his way down in the sewer off the sky airship. I forget what they call the airship, but uh, Excalibur. <laughs> that really what? <laughs> yeah, Excalibur. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Which looks like a shield helicarrier, but yep. awesome X themed. Yeah. But they're 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 walking through the sewer trying to get to Killface's son, trying to save him, and in <laughs> young the, Simon. The, in the other <laughs> scenes to save young Simon, we get Hollywood or we get Torpedo Vegas, Torpedo who Vegas. is another fantastic side character in Frisky Dingo, who is kind of like he runs the rabbit boss. fights in Chinatown. <laughs> yeah, the rabbit fights in Chinatown. Um, he's he's just uh, the soft spoken, like high pitched voiced. <laughs> Mobster, and it's he, just hilarious. The man is not like, easily uh, moved. Yeah, yeah he's kind of like uh, sort. I mean, Vince Vaughn and Be Cool, only even less so, I guess, in terms of yeah. authority. <laughs> yeah, kind of, I guess. Uh, Torpedo Vegas, which is a great name too. I was, I was thinking oh. about that getting ready for the episode. That like that's a great just online username is Torpedo Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> great name for the card tables for sure. If you're yeah. find some Texas Hold'em online and you got to put in a username, yeah, Torpedo that's, Vegas. That's a good go-to. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be a douchebag your whole life. <laughs> great quote <laughs> for somebody that's only in a couple episodes torpedo vegas owns a lot of scenes and a lot of good lines <laughs> your son will leave my curious employ <laughs> oh and that and that's when we get the reveal of the name barnaby jones <laughs> well we is... got it we got it a couple of, earlier on in that sort of storyline yeah, we yeah. got it when he was hit by the car, I think. Yeah. Exactly. It was right. I think it was at the, the end of the episode right before that. Because uh, he has to give him a name. It's like, oh, what's my new best Come friend's name? <laughs> Come live with me. <laughs> Let me tell you about my best friend. <laughs> oh, Barnaby Jones. Nap, nap. <laughs> Barnaby Jones. <laughs> Yeah, the I mean, the, I guess it should be no surprise that the Chinatown episode is uh, is for is for not only everybody but for for Davis for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go. That's my go-to. And and I think that's where we that at least the first extended talk about Darcel Jones of Team Jaguar as well. Yeah, that is with Darcel. <laughs> 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 and then everybody's just getting after Grace Ryan and just talking shit on her. Um, and actually, I think that's at, when uh, same episode I believe is when Wendell is kind of around, right? Do y yes. Uh, when the, the Department of Labor goes to war with Grace <laughs> Ryan's uh, like Cody. <laughs> You loose cannon. Cody's go down. down. Go down for this, Cody. <laughs> loose cannon. <laughs> Call you hearse. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's Wendell, he's Wendell he's also an awesome character. Yeah, Wendell is a supposedly Department of Labor employee, which we found out later he's not. We're not um, allowed to do any of this. <laughs> I'm so glad he made the slideshow. <laughs> What's the slideshow everybody's doing? <laughs> And he has a partner named Cody who he thinks dies. <laughs> Cody doesn't die. <laughs> no, and he, then he frames a murder on him. <laughs> and it's a continued storyline throughout the second season. It's great. Jeff, is your favorite episode, episode two, where you meet uh, Awesome X slash Xander Cruz? I got a couple episodes. Yeah, from season one, that's probably my favorite episode because I do like the introduction of Awesome X, Xander Cruz, the x yeah. Stan, all of that. And then I love... During the election, 
when Xander Cruz is uh, basically saying his platform on the campaign plane to all of the reporters. It's like, pedestrian overpass to Canada. This way the Mexicans <laughs> walk right over us. And it's just so funny, this billionaire running for president who's very outlandish. And it's like, little did we know. That, you know yeah, like, and like his plan for education would make the teacher super hot. Yeah, hotter teacher. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher's a crazy ass smoking hot. Kids will study more. Plus, we'll get them boob jobs. Uh, the it's teachers like, are the, the teachers? students. Yeah. <laughs> Teen, or, it's like seniors too. Yeah. <laughs> Fat ass double D's for everybody. <laughs> you could use a set. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, I, I got to go, go back to the Chinatown episode too, because that is where we, we get uh, Killface and quote Barnaby Jones fighting with one, one another, which is a great scene in and of itself, if not just for the hilarious animation of a naked Xander Cruz still in that wig and, and kill face like they're like um, mounted up with this ridiculous like fighting weapons on them uh but those are technically two separate episodes oh that's right that's right them wandering uh, the sewer and then they get captured by torpedo vegas at the end and then they join the rabbit fights yes and, and they're episode. forced to fight to the death you are a failure as a father <laughs> 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 He's a child. Uh, but there, there is a line in that one that I have uh, bogarted and incorporated into my pro wrestling commentary. And I love it every time I get to use it. And I don't get to use it enough, but I'm, I'm definitely going to start shoehorning it in more. And there's a point where uh, Xander Cruz, a.k.a. Barnaby Jones, says, do you hear a dial tone? Because Barnaby Jones is off the hook. And so I will use that. <laughs> I, will, yeah, I will paraphrase that. I say, do you hear, hear a dial tone? Because insert whatever is off the hook. And I use that in my commentary. It uh, doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well. Uh, you well, should no. use someone's name instead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'll just call them all Barnaby Jones from now on. <laughs> so just just to confuse everybody. Actually, he's Xander Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> and we also get that there too, which is which is yeah. great. Um, but you know, some of the things have come from this show too, like genre mixing alert and <laughs> baffling, uh, eager to know why you're here. Uh, just all. <laughs> And, and there's stuff that in rewatching, I want to use more. Like, I want to use slideshow. I think we should start, uh, like, we're talking uh, Godzilla versus King Kong, that daughter of uh, Apex uh, Company. She's in the slideshow. The oh, the that's daughter. for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's in the slideshow. She's going to get it. What's the uh, slideshow everyone's <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I, Davis, you, you mentioned Ronnie also a great side character, his scene when he's getting crushed by the giant, uh, Hager pants, and it's like literally 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> Fly Eagle. Eagle. Fly. <laughs> yeah. He's Fly. like, <laughs> <laughs> well, they have this whole scene where I, I actually just watched this episode tonight <laughs> at dinner. Um, excellent. He, yeah, he, he was. They're escaping the Excalibur together, uh, Xander and Ronnie, and he's riding a riding Xander Cruz, like like the Eagles in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I feel like Hobbit. <laughs> feel like, and he's thrusting. Yeah, he keeps thrusting as he's as Xander is flying him. It's so <laughs> I, I, I can't get, like, I can't get comfortable. <laughs> if somehow you are still listening to this and you have not watched Frisky Dingo, I, I guess it's important to note that yes, I don't think we've explicitly stated that Killface is the supervillain, yet somehow sympathetic single father and Xander Cruz superhero eccentric billionaire, but also total prick. Yeah. Uh, but but there you go. There's there's, there's, there's heroes. <laughs> yeah, there's the scene set for you, Stan. <laughs> You don't have any loved ones. Uh, but and yeah, really, go ahead. Really, what the first season is uh, Killface trying to use the Annihilatrix to propel the Earth into the sun. Yes. However, <laughs> he does not. He actually saves the world from global warming and then in season two runs for president because of it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's. <laughs> It's built on the wrong side of the earth and pushes the earth further away from the sun. And then it only pushed it away by like uh, a couple of meters or something yeah, like that. But it was so enough to stop small. global warming. And then so he gets yeah, all this positive praise. He gets all boost the, to his public persona. 
Yeah, gets gets all the plaudits from it. That's actually a... And then Xander Cruz gets pissed off, and he goes, I'm the one who turned on the Annihilatrix. I should be getting <laughs> the credit. And so he runs for president against Killface just to <laughs> rub it in Which, his face. Yeah, that's really the whole arc of season two is is the, the presidential the election. election. Yeah, absolutely. And then, like, the last four episodes to kind of just round out the story that have nothing to do with um, anything else, really. Yeah, and those the last four episodes always make me kind of sad because they just kill off, like, essentially everyone. Yeah, yeah, they really know? were just finishing things. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, I do. guess they had to know. Yeah, I, but it, it's still even in watching it. I, I wish they had uh, left it a little bit more open ended. Like Sin gets killed, Grace Ryan, aka Antagony, gets killed. Uh, Watley, and even Cody and, too. Yeah, Cody too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cody. Works I'm for glad Wendell or lives. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, Jeff, you know, you and I back in the day used to talk about scenarios too, because in season one, uh, the X Coles need to find essentially a duplicate of Xander Cruz to stop their heads from getting blown up every hour. <laughs> uh, and when they get Neural, uh, the intellectually disabled twin, homeless twin brother, homeless twin brother of, brother. of Xander Cruz, Neural, uh, I, I always I I think it's the episode's called Flowers for Neural, which is yeah. a, a reference to Flowers for Algernon, which is a great short story, by the it's way. It's uh, Agamemnon. <laughs> um, but like the neural character is one that you know we sort of fantasy booked a long time ago that if they had kept him alive, you could have done Evil X, and he could have been That's his really whole great. own story arc, like an evil, awesome X character. Would have uh, been it's one. too I confusing really with the twin running around. Yeah, it's you know what? You're right, way. Jeff. <laughs> You're doing it, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, but they just, I mean, I guess that was the, the the harbinger of things to come because Ronnie just kills him out of nowhere uh, and they're they're not even doing it. What the hell, Ronnie? <laughs> um, I, I, w- I will say that in, and I always like them, but in rewatching uh, in this day and age, the Exticles are some of the, just the absolute best parts of the show. <laughs> are, are, are the exicles like just the, the the whole through line uh i like one of my favorite lines is when xander cruz is being held hostage and you hear it's like he's not gonna pay you a dime and xander's like yeah because dead men don't pay no ransom <laughs> <He's>, no, no! <laughs> yeah, it's so good <laughs> the delivery is so good on all on all parts and just yeah the, the exicles are some of my favorite parts of the show for sure um any any other standout characters or anything that we haven't mentioned i mean i guess we haven't really talked about uh sin or watley all that much watley or simon or si- yes yeah, simon's probably the most important one we gotta talk about which is kill face's son uh and uh, the the mumbler uh, of the series I, I like that uh sort of we get the chewbacca treatment with him where you can't really ever tell what he's saying but but kill face will, will translate for you what'd you think of young young simon davis <laughs> Well, he loves his knives, and uh, you, you can't go to pet stores with young Simon. <laughs> We're at all that's pet shops. Why, that's why we can't go back to Arizona. So, Arizona all over again. Uh, no, Simon's great. He, <laughs> I think my favorite part with him is he always pushes his cereal bowl <laughs> off of the counter. Like just a cat. To, <laughs> to piss kill face off. <laughs> at one point in the series, <laughs> kill face goes... Uh, he's ranting about something. He's like, but the fact of the matter is, that's our last ball. Because <laughs> he's been doing it for so long. <laughs> and it's just, oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, but Simon, Simon's an interesting character that they have. Jeff, what's your take on Simon? Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of Simon. I love Simon. <laughs> We've talked about the budgie cycle. Self esteem is very delicate right now. It's true. <laughs> uh, no, he's a great character. It makes Killface very sympathetic. Uh, I I like how he speaks and uh, just his interactions with everybody. I mean, he shot Stan in the knee, which yep, is great. That's right. And <laughs> and he's the one who I believe supplied the rocket launcher to destroy the campaign jet in the first place. I think he fired it, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did. Oh, yeah, that's right. And they were going to watch Cinemax all night. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I love that. I mean, the relationship between between Killface and, and Simon is great. Like going that's back the to heart the, of the show. It, it, it really is. I mean, going back to that hospital episode where Killface has a pipe jutting out of his lung again. Simon has just a light scrape, but Killface is very concerned. But sitting next to them mm-hmm. is uh, Grace Ryan, who's got these radioactive ants crawling all over her. And Killface is like, no, I don't think she wants to be your new 
mummy. <laughs> <laughs> and just like the, 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 the glaring from 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 uh, Grace Ryan is so good. Um, yeah, just the and then like at one other point too, it's like it refers to Sin as like Simon's mother figure and how touched she is by that. I really like Sin too. Like yeah. the, her interactions with Killface are great. Like one one of my favorite lines is when. Uh, she had let all of the like the repossession people just uh, waltz right in and take all of Killface's stuff, and then they find that printer for uh, Operation Snooperfax, which I will grant you is a little convoluted. Uh, but when she suggests selling it, uh, Killface's like, "Oh yeah, this will definitely get us enough money to to uh, repossess the Annihilatrix. You're really, 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 really smart and pretty." <laughs> it's just it's so good um sin's a great character simon obviously i think simon is, is definitely a, one, one of the favorites for for everybody i would say that probably watched the show uh to quill aka the gibbering hooligan according to uh to kill face and vice presidential candidate and future president uh in, in the show uh like his the the all that jizz song i can't believe that was on tv <laughs> I, I know it's Adult Swim. Swim. Album. Yeah. It was, God. It was, what, yeah, early 2000s. Early 2000s with, you know, that era South Park, too. They were, like, trying to keep up with all this stuff. And, um, you know, now, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Adult Swim is still, you know, the cartoons are still doing, probably pushing the boundaries more than other shows. But still, I don't think they're doing what shows were doing back then either. Yeah, it's, it's it was very a fun true. Time and Adult Swim is like the Wild West. It it really it really was. Um, Watley, aka the Dread Lobster, uh, gave to the world uh, when they were going to Las Vegas. I like to call it Lost Wages, which nice is, is a gift in and of itself uh, that that he gave to the world. So so Watley's worth it. Uh, if, if for nothing else for that, Valerie, also uh, a good character, too, uh, in her own right, though. I hold it against her that she killed Sin um, when when she did like that. But they're trying to wrap things up. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I get it. Uh, but but Valerie with the um, like when Killface is upset with her, like their scenes early on in the show are great and just her call back to please don't kill me please don't make it so appealing <laughs> is is all very Douche. good but it's i mean it's a show that if again it's on hbo max you can watch it very easily in the course of a uh, an evening or two if, if you wanted to, to catch up and know what the hell that we're talking about but uh i want us to do a fantastic four of our frisky dingo characters and, and why to close things out here and anything else that you want to throw in that we haven't covered uh, from Frisky Dingo. Davis, are you ready? Oh, man. I mean, do we do we or, even or, include Killface and Awesome and Xander Cruz? Because I feel like they're going to be at everyone's. Ooh, good question. That is a good question. I mean, the, like, Killface is definitely my favorite character. And Xander I, Cruz is definitely my favorite character. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And they're they're both in my they would both be in my top four. So and yeah, they're like, my top two favorite I, characters. So. I feel I feel like that. <laughs> I don't know. Like, is it cheating to have the Exticles as my fourth? I guess. No, I, I think the Exticles could be like all one. It encompassing because because maybe, maybe Ronnie's one. What, 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 my two? one. Yeah, that, I mean that's. A, I'm actually glad you brought that up because there are things from Frisky Dingo uh, that in Archer you get you get callbacks to that were, yeah. you know, like Fat Mike and, and some other things. And also in Frisky Dingo, I, I couldn't notice on their way to Vegas, uh, a little Ben-like scorpion that skittered onto the road, too, like that episode of Sea <laughs> lab with Bebop Cola. So I, I appreciated that. But my, my Fantastic Four Frisky Dingo, I, I'll just go ahead and go first. Killface, Xander Cruz, boop, 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 boop. Uh, Simon, and the Exticles are, are the, the four choices. I would, with with it, very difficult for me to leave off Wendell, who is is also a, a big big favorite of mine, Jeff? Who do you got? All right. Well, for including them, uh, yeah, Osmex slash Xander Cruz, Killface. I'm going Wendell. I'm going Ronnie. Ronnie's great. Ronnie's another yeah. toughie. <laughs> and Jeff, I mean, it's you, like yeah, I don't want to eliminate Simon or Stan, but I got to make room somewhere. Yeah, I mean, there's a top four for a reason. Um, what about TV's Hunter. 
<laughs> Fred Dreyer. <laughs> Which, by the way, Fred Two Dreyer, safeties in a single game. Fred Dreyer came up on one of the game broadcasts that I was on. And I, the only thing I can think of was TV's <laughs> Hunter. <laughs> Scorch and safety. Same game. All right. true. I, I will. That's your fact. Man. I'm trying to be a little different here, but I don't think I can because they're because I feel the same way, Jeff. I, I, I have Xander, I have Killface, I have Wendell, and I definitely have Ronnie. Ronnie is <laughs> definitely Xander, on Xander, Wendell, and Ronnie four. together on that road trip was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I got to say, I love that uh, Baby Lamont was in it for so long in the second <laughs> season because I'm, I'm a Penguin guy. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, weren't the you pig, like El the Penguinito? Pe- and your beard <laughs> is dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he he like broke uh baby Lamont was the reason that Xander was in a neck brace. <laughs> yeah, he uppercutted <laughs> I mean, him with baby Wendell. He, he was the weapon, but you know, oh well. <laughs> but yeah, no. broken in kill faces. <laughs> there, there, there's so many random quotes of like, why is pretty much why is there a penguin here? <laughs> and I fucking hate penguins or something hey, his like Q that. His rating was off the charts. <laughs> I, I do like um, when Killface found religion. Just his like his uh, when he was running for president, he found religion and was doing all the all the tours of everything. <laughs> like that, those scenes are terrific, and he's even turning against himself. And the global warming was made up, and it was nowhere <laughs> nowhere to be found in the Bible. Only <laughs> only to drop it all once Simon Fake comes out as gay to him because he is a good father. That is the that is the through line uh, of the entire show. Is he's just a, he's just a single dad. Evil and kill face, which, by, which I guess we we should end to talking a little bit about the fact that the Exticles did get a uh, very short lived spinoff. Uh, I I didn't even really watch it. Yeah, well, there was only two episodes. Yeah, <laughs> probably two Jeff, more. Jeff, you there saw it though, right? Or at least I, one. I watched them one night, and yeah, I, never again. <laughs> <laughs> that bad? They, huh? I hear it's not even that it. bad. I don't even think you could find it again. Yeah. I think they dead. they were what they were, and that's why they were good, is because they were a side piece to the main story. Yeah. And what they added was not something to be a main focus on. And uh, it was just a perfect addition. You know, it's just I, like yeah. the spices you add to a meal. Like they were they were your pepper and salt. They they absolutely were. I mean, I'm thinking about when they were doing like the DNA test machine. <laughs> Uh, no, that, yeah, that, that's a good take. It's good. It's a good take. <laughs> not my the, baby. Yeah, exactly. The DNA test machine. It's like you are not the father. He's like start shooting off the gun. Going, it's like, oh, now you woke the baby. <laughs> not my baby. <laughs> not my baby. <laughs> so good. So, like when they're uh, they're like doing the ceramics, even though their heads are exploding. It's like we have a whole <laughs> hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, an ashtray for my mom. <laughs> she still smokes, dude. I know, dude. <laughs> Dude, I know. Like again, in in rewatching, my appreciation for the X Coles is is even higher than when, when I when I first watched Frisky Dingo. They, I think they have the benefit of the, their this just little group that has a multitude of different voices, so you can easily just throw in uh, all, all these like little side jokes about their personal lives and everything, like the one with the piano recital and <laughs> her, her head exploding. <laughs> but you know whatever <laughs> and and like when sin joins them and, and stuff like that like Hooper. yeah it's weird that i want to fuck hooper not as weird yeah. as i want to fuck new fat mike oh, yeah, going to get it <laughs> he's he's got some great tits <laughs> yeah. yeah just their just their like lack of understanding uh and, and, and xander not knowing that they weren't robots too <laughs> <laughs> Power down, Gaybot. That's an Earthman order. <laughs> first, first, I thought it was hydraulic fluid. <laughs> but it, it is just, I mean, it's such an awesomely enjoyable show. It's just, it. every episode has something that really puts a smile on my face. So I can't, I can't recommend it uh, enough. Uh, Killface and Xander Cruz, I would, I would love to see some sort. I don't think you could do the show today, uh, but... They, I, I don't know, man. Like, there, there was always a part of me that was hopeful for a very long time that somehow we would get a season three of Frisky Dingo. It never happened. Uh, but I'm so glad that the two seasons are on HBO Max. Any parting shots for Frisky Dingo before we get out of here? I'd still like to see more of uh, a guest spot or something on Archer. 
Yeah. I would like to see some sort or of more movie. references to them. Like you said, what? if they refer to like President Quill or something like that. Wasn't that our ongoing joke, Jeff, of when we'd go yes! into... Talk about that. <laughs> we'd go into uh, the hall, the Indigo Ballroom at Comic-Con. Jeff and I would spend our Fridays in there and, you know, it'd be all mostly adult swim shows, some other anim- animated shows. Yeah. And for, <laughs> I don't know how many years we did this to James, but it was like, James... Frisky, they announced it. Frisky Dingo season three, it's coming back. Or ne- maybe the next year it was like, oh, they're doing a Frisky Demo cameo in Archer. It's happening. Yeah, it was and supposed just- to be like an awesome ex Sterling Archer team up, which would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we changed it up each year, but I mean, we. You guys got me really good for like a whole day one time. I think it was. Oh, yeah. It, it, it was have the been first com- time we did it. And yeah. Okay. Because yeah. They always show you uh, a trailer or coming attraction to the new season of Archer. That happened to be the one year that they didn't do it, and that's because it was um, Archer Vice. And I don't know. Maybe they were afraid people there would be backlash, which there was <laughs> <laughs> when they finally did reveal it. But um, yeah. So Davis and I just made it up. It's like, yeah, it's just going to be an entire season of a frisky dingo. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> Where uh, yeah, they had to team up with Awesome X and the Exticles to stop Killface for some we reason. Made, we made we made up what we wanted. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to watch that season. Is anybody thinking that would have been worse than Archer Vice? It would have been amazing. <laughs> I still want to see it, and I guess that's the best way that they could they could somehow revive for Ski Dingo is just to do a, a one off. Just do thing. it through Archer, yeah. yeah, like they did with that excellent uh, season finale where it was like Sea Lab. Yes, and uh, Captain great. Murphy had. You know, like mentally broke down. It was a terrorist. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. You do that. Um, I mean, they've had the extical armor. They've made the fat mic references. I feel like they mentioned in one of the panels one year why they couldn't do more. I think it had to do with like ownership of different things, mm. and they don't have access to everything from Frisky Dingo. Just like I don't think they they had as much availability with C Lab because I think it's a Turner, uh, a Ted Turner product or something like that because. TNT and Adult Swim or whatever, and they're on FX. I, I don't okay. know exactly what it is, but they can't do the complete like crossover. Well, that's, that is a shame, but you can watch the complete series of Frisky Dingo on HBO Max, and I certainly uh, recommend you do that. That is going to do it for this edition of the Best Damn Nerd Show. Have a great week, everyone. Remember, if you're a nerd, always say it loud, say it proud, and I am also obviously, awesomely, effing leaving.